One of the topics that we've been talking about over the last several months and years here at Wikibon is the channel. There has been a huge channel land grab uh, over the last couple of years, and it's intensified, I would say, in the last 12 to 18 months. You've got the large companies in the computer industry realizing that the channel is becoming increasingly important and have really gone hard after that channel. We've seen companies completely transform their attitude to the, ch to the channel and do a much, much better job servicing that important role. At the same time, you have this new type of channel, the cloud service provider that's coming in, and a lot of channel partners that we talk to at Wikibon are freaking out about the transformation and the disruption that's causing to their business. Now, much of the focus on the channel is on product. Of course, large IT manufacturers, they want to move hardware and software, but what's lost oftentimes in the discussion is services. So the question is, how do established uh, IT industry players provide services, and what role does the channel play? How do they complement? How do they compete with? How do they cooperate with the channel? Here with us today is Daniel Cotier, who's with EMC. He's the Vice President of the Global Services Partners. He's the global lead for EMC, uh, based actually overseas. It's kind of a unique role and a new role for EMC. So we're going to talk about these trends and some other activities going on at the company. Daniel, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks a lot, and thanks for uh, having us today with you. So, Yeah, well, pleasure seeing you, and uh, let's start with your role. So we were talking off camera, you said this is a, a new role, yep, uh, for yeah. obviously for you and for EMC. So what is that role, and, and what are your objectives? Okay, so um, first of all, let me give you a little bit of background and where I, where I am coming from. So prior to taking that role uh, one year ago, I, I used to run the professional services organization for EMC in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And, and one of the things that uh, we realize in, uh, in this part of the world is that the partner uh, community is becoming a prevalent uh, way of doing business as well. So when you have to cover so many countries, you have to work with a partner. So it's becoming a more, uh, more natural things to do. And, and I, I took that job because, as you said, right, so we EMC being a technology company, we are really focusing on promoting and pushing our technology to the channel community. And the services was very often seen as being an afterthought. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, we need to do services. Let's, let's do something about it, right? So, and, and my belief is that, no, we need to embed the services as a discussion from day one because it's no longer sufficient for a partner just to promote technology and to sell technology. What the customer wants, they want a solution which is well fitted for their needs. And there is no solution without services. So then the question for us is how can we offer the best choice, make it easy for a partner community to not only pick up on the technology, but also have the right uh, portfolio of services that they can offer to the market. So that's, that's basically my, my mission. I want to offer them uh, a way to resell, a way to cooperate uh, with us, and, and a way to become enabled, uh, professional, in delivering EMC services. So let's talk about where you draw that line. Your, your chairman and CEO, Joe Tucci, has off, often, very often said, we're not going to compete with our channel partners, uh, with our, our service provider partners. Absolutely, yeah. So he's made that clear statement. Uh, other competitors have a more difficult time making that statement because you know, a company like IBM essentially became a services mm -hmm. company in the, in the 90s and early 2000s. HP acquires EDS, Dell acquires Perot. You know, at the same time, they have to partner as well. But, how do you manage that? Uh, granted, it's easier, but you still have a fairly important and sizable mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. business. So where do you draw the line? Um, the first choice working with a partner community is to push them to become uh, enabled to do the services, right? But if you are a, the services business manager in, a, in one of those partners, you will look at your, uh, at your uh, services opportunity as well as, as a business and uh, where can I make my profit, right? A and you would like to have a choice, right? You would like to be able to say, yeah, it makes sense for me to be doing that services myself because that's really something which is helping me to differentiate from my competition. Or it's a better choice for me basically to, to go and resell a service of EMC and I can make some margin on that too. Or, oh yeah, here is a nice portfolio where we can assemble a new services with EMC, and we can bring that value to the to the uh, to the to the customer base, right? So having making moving from a pure 
again, uh, a technical discussion to a business discussion is, I think, a, a good way to avoid the competition, knowing that we are still, we still prefer the partner to be enabled as a first choice. Now, if they don't want, then we can help them too. So your preference, uh, make sure I understood that, your right. preference is that the partner delivers the services end to end with maybe you as a, a support as mechanism. As a backup, eventually, if they don't have some capabilities or whatever, but the preferred choice is them to be enabled and them to be on the front end. We want them to, to keep the customer, their customer relationship, which is really their value at the end of the chain, uh, and services becoming basically an enabler into that discussion. When your partner delivers services, are those services uh, uh, partner branded? Are they EMC branded? Are they co-branded? How does that work? Uh, we do have a, a choice, right? So they can be uh, partner branded. So the partner will go through through the training and, and the certification and the uh, uh, online uh, lab, the VLAB and the, the guidance services that we have put together, which is what one of the things that we are announcing uh, today. And um, uh, also the, the, the partner can, uh, can help, can call on us and basically say, can you come and, and work with us? And this would be a cooperative type of services and in that model, then we can do a co-branding. So it can be uh, a partner branded services powered by EMC, for example. Okay, so you don't care. We are, we are and, and we are going to, to even go further in that discussion and, and even go into a, a model in the future where we would like to have an EMC branded services mm -hmm. delivered by partner. Okay, I mean, yeah. I said you don't care. You, you are, you're agnostic to whatever right, the partner exactly. wants to so do. Again, so again, the main yeah. point here is that what choices yeah. is available for the partner in order for them to make it really profitable on their business. All right, so we have some news. So you, you, you mentioned you have an announcement today. Talk, talk about what you're announcing and then we'll get into it. Right, so from a services point of view, we are uh, announcing a simplification of our uh, Velocity Services program, where in the past we, had to, we used to have different uh, acronyms and names uh, uh, for defining uh, what we were doing into uh, implementation and support type of services. We have simplified all that. Now we are talking about a Velocity Implement uh, implementation services, a velocity remote support services, and a velocity on-site support services. That's the three main family, if you wish, of uh, uh, offer uh, that um, a partner can go and get certified on and okay. work with us. Okay, so uh, in terms of the simplification, wh what was the impetus for that? That was feedback from, from partners, from customers? Talk about that a little uh, bit. Absolutely. So uh, we, we have also set up uh, a mechanism uh, now to get the more formal feedback from the partner community. And we have two ways to, uh, to get that, feed, that feedback. One, we have established uh, what we are calling a services partner advisory board, uh, where we have uh, selected a number of our top partners, key partners across the world. And we are organizing uh, events where we are uh, showing to them what we have in our plan, what we have in our mind, and we are asking them for their feedback of what's working, what's not working, what, we, what do we need to improve. Based on that, we heard very loud and clear that we are too complex, too difficult, we need to simplify. So that, that was one of the message. Another feedback that we have also put in place is uh, a partner um, uh, satisfaction uh, survey, partner uh, uh, TC, if you wish, like a customer uh, TC kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. And we are also collecting feedback from uh, uh, on the relationship that they are having with uh, with EMC. Well. TCE is total customer experience. Right. right. So, si uh, so yeah. think about uh, a TP, total partner experience, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how do they engage with us? How do they work with us? And, and so like that. Daniel, can you talk about how you ensure quality? As a customer, I, I, I like the choice, mm -hmm. uh, but if, you know, I work with a, you know, <laughs> a vertically integrated services supplier end to end, I know at least that uh, uh, um, I, I got a one throat to choke. So right. how do you ensure the quality and how do you address that sort of single point of contact issue? Right, so um, we, we, we have also established a, a quality program and we are measuring the quality at the customer level. So even if the solution is fully delivered by the partner, we are still doing a transactional survey at the customer level and the customer is basically telling us, yep, it was a good experience, no, it was not a good experience and for whatever reason. So then we, we look at that and we follow up on that and we we are basically inspecting and monitoring uh, the partner on, on the level of quality they are doing. If they don't deliver uh, the right level of quality, then we are going to them, talking to them, looking at why is that, what, what plan can we put in place, an action plan, 
we can put in place? Is it a, a lack of uh, knowledge, lack of certification, uh, wrong usage of the tool? So all, all this normal issue, right? And we work with a, with a partner. So I, I, the, the customer experience, the quality as a customer is really a key point that we want to, to ensure in the, in the services definition. So you're, try, you're trying to make that seamless. Um, uh, in other words, the total customer experience, the TCE activity that you do, you're extending that through to the partner. Right. Now, I know uh, we've met uh, Jim Bampos a number of times. Mm -hmm. He's been on theCUBE before, right. and he's very impressive capabilities, and, mm -hmm. and it's obvious that, that EMC puts a lot of investment in there. Where are you at in terms of how, um, how much that TCE ethos, if you will, has gotten to the channel? Is it all, are they, are there, is there no difference between internal EMC and the channel? I, I doubt it at this point, but how far along are you there? Yeah, when we look at the, um, at the metrics, the statistics we are getting from the transactional survey, the level of quality is basically the same. It right? is? Okay. Yeah, but uh, on a global basis. Now, of course, you have some variation. Uh, one of the things we are working on today is still to increase uh, the visibility on, uh, to make it more globally consistent across the world. But for the, for the data we have today, we compare the numbers and uh, the survey and the satisfaction is basically at the same level. I want to talk about the, the Amazon effect. So you've got a situation, mm -hmm. and we've been tracking this uh, for, uh, for a while now at, at Wikibon <coughs> and SiliconANGLE. You've got this guerrilla Amazon coming into the enterprise. It's putting a lot of pressure on not only the enterprise CIOs, but also uh, the uh, other cloud service providers right. and, of course, channel partners because the, the service providers, the cloud service providers, are becoming a big channel. Right. Uh, and that is quite disruptive potentially to the channel. Are channel partners that you're working with uh, looking to you for guidance as to how to become uh, CSPs, cloud service providers? Mm -hmm. Are they actually transforming to do that? I mean, talk about that a little bit. Okay, um, absolutely. So what what we are seeing is, is a partner community is really kind of questioning what they should become in the future. And um, my vision is that we sh it, it should not be up to us to categorize a partner in a given category, right? So are you a reseller, are you a distributor, are you a service provider? They can become all that in the future. And they start to look at a different business model and different business opportunity. And what we have established is uh, we have a cloud program, cloud services program, uh, which has three main uh, legs. One which is uh, what we are calling the cloud builder, which is helping the, the reseller to provide to their end customer private cloud solution, right, on the customer premises. There is a second program, which is a cloud service provider, the service provider program, which is designed for the reseller to, to look at the opportunity of them becoming a service provider in addition to their reselling model. And we can help them. We have defined a uh, reference architecture for uh, storage as a service, backup as a service. We can help them with the services definition and the operation and things like that. A and thirdly, uh, we also recognize the fact that a reseller, um, the value of a reseller is very often also into their commercial and customer relationship. And they might not be willing to become a service provider, but they might be interested to resell a service coming from a service provider. So we, have, we, we are establishing uh, a cloud reseller type of model as well uh, in our ecosystem. So let me make sure I understand. So you have a Velocity service provider program, so, that, so your partners could resell uh, uh, cloud services from those Velocity service providers, is that, that is right? Correct. And that is correct. take a lick off the cone, that essentially. Is correct. Yeah. Um, I wonder if we could switch gears to talk about the portfolio. So you've got a, a, you know the typical portfolio of, of mm -hmm. services from correct. consulting and presumably some design and and, and implementation <laughs> and, and, and support services and training and education. How does that map to the channel? Is it sort of one-to-one? -one? Uh, is it different in the direct customer base than it is through the channel? I wonder if you could... No, we are trying that. to make it uh, exactly the same. And uh, we, we started initially the journey uh, with, a, with a partner community, mainly talking about implementation services and uh, support services. And this is why we are offering them the opportunity to become a Velocity implement uh, partner or Velocity remote support. Uh, first, first level of call, right? So you're a customer, you call me, partner is picking up the phone, making the first level of uh, diagnosis, and then uh, passing it to uh, an engineering team. That could be uh, EMC, right? 
or if they, they can also go a little bit further and have also an on-site support capability where they would do the break fix. And the level three, which is really the engineering part of it, of course, we, yeah, that's, that's uh, EMC responsibility. So we have that uh, today. We are also um, uh, expanding that with a family of services, <coughs> sorry, that we are calling the cooperative services, where because, because we are the, the vendor, right, we, we are very close to the technology. And when you look at service like uh, performance assessment or a configuration check, yeah, there are, when you look at that service, there are two parts of it. One part which is close to the customer and one part which is close to the product. We EMC, in these cooperative services, we, we keep the, the part which is close to the product and we deliver that to the partner who then bring it to the customer. So they keep their, their, their relationship with the customer and we provide the added value here. So that's one thing we are doing. We are also looking at uh, other, other opportunity in uh, remote, remote management, remote monitoring uh, services that we have in our catalog that we would like to offer to the partner as well. So my goal is really to get to a point where the, the portfolio of services supporting the EMC uh, mission of cloud, big data, and trust will be exactly the same on the partner landscape and uh, internally as well. I wonder, I mean, because you're based in Europe, I, I want to ask you, because you're, I think, in a position to, to answer this, is can you talk about, and you also have a global lead role, can you talk about the differences in, in regions um, over the last, you know, 10 or 20 years? Have, the, have they, has it, has thing, have things changed, you know, regionally? Are there still stark differences, and what are those differences? What I see is that uh, this is becoming more and more global. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the, the type of questions or the type of uh, uh, business opportunities that we are we are seeing does not really vary that much from uh, from from one country to another one. At least when you talk about the m let's call it the, the more developed country, right? When you are really remote into a developing country, then it's eventually a slightly uh, different discussion. But for all the mature country, it's the same demand, the same uh, same concern as well. And uh, it's it con for the customer having a choice as well now to either buy a technology or to uh, go for a service provider type of model at the same whatever you are in US or France or Germany or, or Japan, right? So that's, that's the same issue. Right? Now one of the other things you know, you've obviously seen evolve over the last <coughs> couple of decades is the whole outsourcing business. You remember right. the days when some people would just uh, outsource their entire IT to somebody and say, here, well, just you, you run it. Absolutely. Uh, there were some high profile situations, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, and that seems to have, have changed, and of mm -hmm. course it's being replaced by this everything is a service right. type of thing. You also have this notion of hyperscale coming in, you know, and what I mean by that is, if you think about the way Facebook is designing data centers. Now Facebook today is an outlier, but potentially it's a harbinger of the way the future mm -hmm. is going to be, is commodity infrastructure, software services laid on top, Absolutely, um, yeah. something breaks, you throw it away. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see that affecting uh, your your business and the channel business going forward. Uh, do you see the the you know the the Facebooks of the world that type of approach and the enterprise IT is ever coming together or are they on sort of separate tracks in your view? I think they will stay probably on a separate track for a, for a while. But I, I, I if I would be a CIO myself, I, I would look at uh, any opportunity uh, that I have to provide the the right services to my end user. Uh, customer, if you wish, right? So if I can bring to them the right application using an Amazon uh, type of service or whatever, I should do it, right? Now, if it is really a core uh, application and uh, I have to keep it internally, that's what I have to do, right? And But can I then use uh, an infrastructure platform and I build everything myself? Or am I better off using a converged infrastructure? Or am I better off basically going for also a, a, an infrastructure as a service? It's a choice now, right? So why not uh, having all that in your catalog and making the right, uh, the right option? So that somewhat changes the role of the IT organization, uh, doesn't yeah. it? From, from one of implementer to potentially one of advisor, people call it cloud brokers. Right. Um, and, and how does EMC, or does <coughs> EMC help its partners and, and its customers make that transformation and, and actually mm -hmm. you know, decide what to put where? Um, I think again, it's a, uh, and we're not going to talk about technology today, right? So, but I think we have great, uh, great technology, which is really helping uh, that journey. 
uh, especially on the virtualization and uh, and all these kind of things. We can geek out if you want. No, I, I, won't, I probably <laughs> won't be the right person for that anyway. Uh, but also, we uh, uh, again by by recognizing the fact that we are not dictating anymore and we have to offer a choice. I think that's the right attitude. Excellent. All right, Daniel. Well, listen. Thanks very much for coming on the cube. Thanks, uh, Dave. Really appreciate the discussion. All right, everybody. This is uh, Dave Vellante. We're here at uh, Wikibon headquarters. Thanks for watching. Uh, keep it right there. We'll uh, we'll see you next time.